another episode of Ausmopreneur TV. As with many of our members, great ideas are born from a need and identifying a gap in the market. When Danielle Michaels came back from a trip to New Zealand with her six-week-old daughter, she told her friend Monique Filer she wished she had a more compact carry case for her nappies and wipes. That was the beginning of B-Box and the creation of the very successful nappy wallet. Danielle and Monique now have five daughters between them and B-Box is on track to make two and a half million dollars this year. In this episode, Georgia Main looks at how to develop a product and explores what's involved in the manufacturing process. Well, hi Monique and thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So we've heard where the idea came uh, for, for B-Box, but how long was it between coming up with the idea and actually launching the product? It took us two years to get to market because it was the first product we'd ever manufactured. It was a really long learning curve for us. So we came up with the idea and then we needed to go through all the steps. So finding an industrial designer and understanding what um, they would be able to do for us in the process and finding a manufacturer in China. Um, so yeah, it was two years. Was it easier or harder than you thought? Definitely harder. <laughs> And we had no idea when we first came up with the idea how plastic products were even manufactured. Yeah. So how did you know what to do? Um, Danielle's, which is my business partner's um, brother-in-law, is an industrial designer, and so um, when she was talking to him about the product, he was able to explain some of the process to us. Um, and then we really googled um, to find an industrial designer. Um, and went from there. So we looked for a, s a small agency because um, we thought that um, given we were you know, just starting that it would work better for us. Yeah. Um, and they really helped us along the way as well. So do you think it's important to take the time to get it right before rushing to market? Was it important to you to get you know every step covered so you knew exactly what you were going to market with? 100% because a lot of the time you have one chance to, to get it to market and to really make an impression. Um, so we wanted to make sure we had it 100% right before before we went to market. And once we launched, there were things that we tweet, tweaked, but um, nothing that really the market would, was so noticeable to them. But And that's why it took a long time, because we really wanted to make it perfect. And you know, with the first product, we also had to work out our branding and you know, what B-Box stood for. Um, so it was developing all of that as well. Yeah. So how did you go from just this idea, like was it a drawing or something, to actually, you know, this product? So um, Danielle had just come back on a flight from New Zealand with her six-week-old six baby um, and was saying how impossible it was to, to change a nappy. <laughs> and so that was how the idea for the nappy wallet um, came about. So we literally got a Huggies nappies box and chopped it up and stuck it all together and that was our very first prototype. So you and your business partner Danielle were friends before B-Box began. Has the business tested your friendship? Definitely, many times. <laughs> but we've really been able to separate our friendship um, and the business. Sometimes you know, we'll, have a, we'll look at something one way and you really need someone to be able to challenge you because just because you think it's right, maybe it's not the best decision. Mm. And that's really a strength that we've, we've been able to bring to the business and really be able to challenge each other and not take it personally. And sometimes it's hard, but we know that it's not attacking the other person, it's really looking at what's the best for the business. Absolutely. And so what did you both do before you formed the business together? So Danielle came from a marketing and PR background um, and she did a lot of copywriting um, for accounting and law firms and I came from a finance and operations background. It's a good marriage. So, yes, yeah. so we had some really complementary skills. So I look after all the finance and operations in the business mm -hmm. and deal with China and Danielle looks after the branding and marketing for B-Box and also our international expansion. So it works really well. Yeah. So when, when did you guys know or feel um, that the business was a success? I think that um, when people started asking for the brand rather than uh, you know, knocking on it, doors to get it into stores, when people started coming to us. And also when you see the repeat orders. Um, so when we first launched and 
you know, we took it to a trade show and we got 30 orders and we were so excited. But it was sitting there and waiting for those, the repeat orders to come in. Because yeah. it's, you know, it's, I mean, I wouldn't say it's easy, but it's not just getting the products into the store, but it's getting people into the stores to buy them. Yeah. So they just don't sit on the shelves. Yeah, absolutely. And so internationally, though, your sales have, have really grown. Where are your, where's your biggest market overseas? So our biggest markets will be Korea, Japan and the US. Why do you think that is? You know, sometimes it's the partners that you work with that really embrace the brand and you take it to their market. Mm -hmm. um, but we've been blown away by the international success of the brand yeah. and how well it's doing overseas. So what do you think you both would have been doing if you didn't go ahead with Beebox? Would you have both stayed in your former professions, do you think? Um, and, you know, it's really hard to, to know what we would have done. Yeah. I think that at the time, my husband was working ridiculous hours and in my professional career, it was also, it wasn't a nine to five job. And we made the decision that we wanted to be able to spend time with our kids, that we didn't want to just have kids and never see them. Yeah. Um, and that was the reason we started the business. And I mean, we work much longer hours now than we ever did before, but you've got that satisfaction that you're building something for yourself. And we have that flexibility where once we've put the kids to bed, we can um, work once, you know, at the end of the day, or if we wanted to, if we need to take the kids to school or a concert, we've got that flexibility. Yeah. So we probably work the same amount of hours, but we can spread them out during the day how we choose. Absolutely. Um, and looking back um, at the start of, of the business, what would you have done differently, do you think? Or is that all part of the process? You know, people can, can give you, like help you along the way and tell you how to do things, but really it's your journey and sometimes you need to make mistakes to be able to get better at it. You know, I talked about earlier about the example of the Made in China stickers went on the packaging and as a result of that we now have a checklist so when we are redoing the packaging um, you have to tick off that all the important elements are actually on the packaging and that makes a big difference because we found it's very easy to miss things like designed in Australia and um, things like that so we put processes in place to try and make sure those um, mistakes don't happen again. Who are, are there any sort of um, crucial people that you've had to use, in particular, I'm thinking of um, navigating that whole concept from here, you know, from here to China, um, that have made a real impact on the business, or have you been able to just sort of, you know, sidestep anyone and been able to deal with them directly? Going over to China makes a big difference, and building those relationships um, face to face. Mm. So, you know, you can have as many contracts as you want. They don't mean as much as perhaps they do here. It's really the relationships that makes the difference. Right. Um, someone once said to us that you could get them to sign a 20-page contract and they'll just sign it. But <laughs> if you're sitting in a meeting with 10 other colleagues, they don't want to lose face. So that um, has a lot more weight than, than a contract um, right. does. I mean, we have contracts in place, but really building those relationships make a big difference so that if something does go wrong they're happy to help you rather than saying you're too fussy yeah you know that we won't work with those factories if they don't have the same standards that we do mm. um and in terms of some advice that you'd give to other mumpreneurs if they're sort of looking at this and thinking you know they've got a product but don't quite know how to you know how to go over to china and, and make it what would be your you know your best advice speak to as many people as you can um people aren't going to give you all their trade secrets but people are often happy to help you along the way um, it's definitely going to be much harder than you think it is you know, we started at thinking that we could work three days a week and mm -hmm. have plenty of time with the kids and it takes a lot of commitment um, and it's easy to say now you know, get people to help but when you're first starting a business you've got limited funds you know, so you know, we had the choice of either spending it on production or getting someone to pack orders for you. So, you know, we would be in the warehouse or in the garage when we first started packing all the orders because, you know, we had limited funds. So it's really understanding how much money you have and how, you, how you're going to spend it, but being prepared to roll your sleeves up and, and do some of the hard work. Yeah. And then, you know, as you grow, really understanding, knowing what you don't know. So something that you're 
you know, outsourcing those skills. So we have a graphic designer that we work with and an industrial designer um, and really knowing, getting the best out of those people. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for your thank time you. today, Monique. Um, and congratulations on all the, all the success so far with Box. Thank you.